Hi there, Loy Macedo. Speaking to you from LoyMacedo.com. Who's Loy Macedo and Think Personal Branding? All right. Um, the time right now is 1.49 in the morning. I just thought I would answer these questions. I had put up a post, Ask Me Anything, Top 10 Questions will be featured in the next video. Um, I got around 40 questions. Um, I decided, okay, I will answer all the 40 questions, but I'll keep it short. So it'll be um one to two line answer but it has been well thought of it's not like i'm just randomly answering them i thought of what is the best answer i wrote down my answers so i thought i would give you something of value and among these 40 questions i will take 10 of them and make longer videos later on and i'll give credit to those of you so once again i appreciate you guys being part of my youtube uh, channel uh, you're part of the community and whether you agree disagree whatever the case i appreciate so this is my way of saying thank you to you and uh, let's move on i'll put the timestamps down below but um, because of the description i cannot put too long i will just uh, keep the essence of the question so timestamps are given down below so let's uh, quickly move on each question like i told you is just going to be a short answer but it's going to be um, it's going to cover up everything so having said that let's move on the first one is Nabil Iqbal. He asks, how do you figure out who you are and build a brand behind it? See, self-discovery takes time. Uh, it's not something that you can easily get. It takes a lot of guidance, coaching, understanding, evaluation. There are people even at the age of 40 who still do not know, you know who they are or uh, what they want or what they are good at. So it's a process of constantly discovering what you're good at but remember this much it's not just what uh, what you want to do in life the main thing is are you able to sustain and survive see even building a brand uh, it all sounds nice but if you cannot make money if you cannot sustain and survive if you can't feed yourself and your family you can't provide i mean what's the point of having a brand so the main thing is uh, doing what you love doing what you love or doing what you're good at while making money out of it, that is the process of brand building. And then, you know, over the years that you spend ex uh, uh, the experience, learning, reading, educating, sharpening your skills, being the best at it. And that is what makes you a brand. And then when you start offering value to other people and people recognize your face with what you do, then you become a brand. I'll make a detailed video on this later on, uh, Nabil. Good question. Okay. The next one is Sneha Wag Wagmare. Okay. Uh, the question is mistakes in terms of health you should avoid in your 20s or 30s. Please include health hacks, tips, or strategies. Health includes both mental and physical. Thank you, Loy. Okay. This uh, question in itself will take a very detailed answer, which I will make a video later on. But the main thing that I'll cover here is. See, the mistakes in terms of health is today, at least uh, in today's day and age, I think the biggest mistake is looking up to influencers, looking up to YouTube, looking up to channels, looking at all these people who have amazing, you know, filters where they show their six pack abs and they show their beautiful bodies. That is not fitness. That is not health. These people are simply uh, showing you a very perfect image, but they're not telling you the realities. Many influencers, I, I personally know a few of them, they take steroids. They, they have opted for surgery, but they do not reveal this. In fact, they keep endorsing products just to make money. So in today's day and age, the biggest mistake in terms of health you can do is go on social media and listen to the advice of every Tom, Dick and Harry. You need to approach a uh, absolute professional who has dedicated their lives like the best person i would say is maybe someone who is an olympic uh, teacher or coach who has groomed many people to achieve excellence they would be very good the you know they would have a high level of expertise like for example mma boxing these coaches or these top level athletes employ the services of the best nutritionist the best exercise coach the best psychology coach now Obviously, you are not at that level. So what is the next best answer is check out someone who's professional, uh, but who's affordable to your budget. So the biggest mistake you can do is 
check online and try to find uh, find answers by just google.com the second mistake uh, that i would say is using shortcuts to achieve quick results from steroids which is not a very safe thing they do produce results but they do produce also permanent damage and um, i would put a, i'll put up a video later on with my experimentation with steroids what had happened and what is the uh, permanent um, impact it has had on my life so please avoid it because you do not know what you're getting into they have permanent uh, uh, you know results then health hacks tips or strategies see there's no such thing as hacks there is only um routines that you can follow and things to make it easier for example a hack as i would define it is doing something that makes it easier a simple hack would be keep your clothes ready the night before so when you get up in the morning it's easier to just change and do exercise that would be a hack a hack wouldn't be if you eat this you're immediately going to feel good and all the problem is once again too many people on social media wanting too much of attention and in terms of mental and physical uh, well being or whatever this is a process that takes time everyone is different everyone is unique there's no one size fits all so the best advice i would give you is approach a professional coach if you find them too expensive just go to them for a month or two months until you learn the fundamentals and then start practicing on your own just avoid google.com and all the answers especially especially these influencers who have perfect bodies show next one is uh, dr prashant nair arnis hall of fame winner wow that's a big name okay i feel there will be a biopic made on you within the next 5 years i don't think so anyway i appreciate uh, you yeah, it's it's really flattering to know that uh, anyone would even think that a biopic would be made on me i just don't see anything interesting i just feel i'm a normal guy but with some extraordinary events that have taken place so anyway Takir Hussain, who is a regular contributor, always good to read your comments. Is there any avenue for dropouts or failures to be trained and educated to restart their life from scratch? I don't think there are dedicated avenues or areas where they are inviting dropouts and failures. However, opportunities are there for those who seek. Um, any job is an opportunity to learn. Any a uh, business venture that um uh, is saying why don't you work even if you go for say something in terms of volunteering that itself will teach you something in terms of networking in terms of doing the job in terms of learning learning from someone senior in terms of taking instructions so it's no such thing as an opportunity would be handed down to you it's more of you searching and then next one is obviously not a high paying job but at least enough to get back on their own feet see over here what you need to keep in mind is nobody is there to spoon feed you or nobody is there to help you stand on your own two feet there are very few people who want to take care of others mostly what you need to do by yourself is figure it out take the initiative try to learn and that's how you can succeed okay next on arvind singh who is once again a regular contributor uh, arvind singh said I think you have covered just about everything sir can't think of anything myself time to ask the public what they want to see I uh, thanks Arvind you always keep commenting that's really nice Next one is Mohammad Suhail Irfan Khazi I think he is also a regular contributor What are some of the things you miss about Dubai that you can't get in Thailand Oh plenty of things plenty of things uh, Dubai is uh, I mean it is a it is a paradise if you have money and uh, you can literally get everything there you need to understand that i am not staying in thailand as a main city i'm staying in a forest in a touristy island which is like 800 kilometers from the main mainland so this is a small island and if like right now covid there are no tourists there is zero it's dead the streets are literally empty it's almost like a ghost town So even when there were people still you cannot compare it to Dubai. Dubai is was like the Las Vegas. It is still like the Las Vegas. So what are some of the things I miss about Dubai? Well you'll be very surprised to know I miss small things like electricity. 
there are plenty of electricity shortages here. The electricity fluctuates up and down. My iMac got fried. My so many electrical appliances got destroyed. Sometimes when I'm doing recording, the electricity just shuts down for almost an hour. So that is one thing. Shopping, you'd not believe you can't get anything here. Everything that has to be ordered has to be ordered from Amazon, has to be ordered from eBay, has to be ordered from you know, some, and getting it also is not easy. After you order it, then you have to submit your passport. Then you have to submit the required documents. Then like, for example, when I wanted a massager, I literally had to give them a doctor's report. I had to state a doctor's report. Why this particular massage? So it's really, really, I mean, there's a lot of bureaucracy, red tapeism. Uh, it's not very easy, not very convenient. And the biggest thing is they have, uh, uh, like every other country, there's a lot of tax. So I'm actually paying 40% more than what you'd pay in Dubai. So that might surprise you. And uh, the latest technology that is when it gets launches uh, in the United States, it's available here after a year. After one year, it gets available. And some things you just don't get it no matter how hard you try unless you pay three times the amount. Like for example, the 3080 graphics card, well, uh, uh, it's impossible to get it unless I'm prepared to pay five to, you'll be surprised, five times more than its actual price. Okay. Number three, what I miss is clients. Obviously, I would love to interact with clients physically. Here, there are none. There are just backpackers and there are tourists who come here to smoke, drink, sex and you know, so, and uh, there is no one who is from my hometown, no Indians, no Pakistanis, Nobody speaks Hindi, so I kind of miss that. Uh, I would also say uh, for the facilities there, at least in Dubai, I was into a triathlon club. I was into a running club. I was into cycling. I was into swimming. Uh, there are no such facilities here. And you know, even if they are, it's it's not the same. And ultimately, the beaches are artificially made over there, which are so beautiful. Here, there are just algae and rocks and stench and uh, not everywhere, but it's not like uh, Dubai, man. Then number five is obviously friends and family. Uh, I had a very small circle, but I did have them. I don't have that here. Number six is restaurants. No Indian restaurants. And the Indian restaurants here, they are created in a way to appeal to the taste of tourists. And last but not least, I mean, business opportunities to work. Um, there are to take part in exhibitions, in events. Uh, here, there is nothing, absolutely nothing. I mean, so yeah, I do miss Dubai a lot, I would say. <laughs> but then again, I mean, when I look at the other side, uh, there are equal amount of blessings which I would never get in Dubai. So, well, it's, it's a choice that I've made. And obviously, uh, Dubai was never home for permanent sake, you know. Next one, Samir Khalid. What are your thoughts or opinions about Malayali people based on your life experiences? Well, uh, see, Malayalis or Pakistanis or Indians or anyone, each one has their own uniqueness. Now, Malayalis, uh, just so that you know, I'm half a Malu. Half a Malu, what I mean by that is my father was from Kochi, Kerala. I studied in a Malayali school. My friends were Malayalis, so... I do know them. Yes, there are certain quirks and there are certain mannerisms that can be irritating uh, to some people who are non Malayalis. Like, for example, Malayalis always speak in their mother tongue. But then again, when you travel around the world, you'll meet Thai people speak in Thai, even if you don't understand. Chinese people speak in Chinese, even if you don't understand. So it's not just Malayalis. The thing that maybe makes them unique is, yes, like they eat with their hands, you know, like a, they make the ball of rice and... Um, grooming is not their forte. They always have their body odor. They wear the lungi that you call the sarong, you know, the cloth. Um, they're very dark skinned because they're always working in the farms. They're always climbing trees and, in, you know, with buffaloes and all that. So, but what I realized is that is the agricultural side of Keralites, okay? That is not the main city. I was very surprised when, you know, during my uh, 2011 Loy Mercedes suicide video, when I went to Kerala, I was very shocked to see the city. There were, there were Range Rovers, there were Ferraris, there were Lamborghinis. I was like, where the fuck am I come? I, I literally, I'm not exaggerating. When I got out of the train station and I saw all these expensive cars, I literally looked up at the signboard to see, am I in Kerala or where the hell am I? 
because I was expecting trees and buffaloes and it's quite modern and there are really a lot of rich people in Kerala. I was, you know, I realized how ignorant I was when I went into the city. There are some places which are so bloody expensive. You cannot afford to even enter that place. So Malayalis are quite rich. And, you know, uh, in UAE, the richest guy is Yusuf Ali. He is worth $4 billion. He has built shopping malls. They are very filthy rich. So, but yeah, apart from that, the quirks which they have, which is, I think it's hardline in Indians. I mean, they are old fashioned. Most of them, no matter how much money they earn, they're still gossipy. They're still religious. They still have strict rules. They're very superstitious. So the, those things do not change in terms of Malayalis. And I think that will always remain. But then again, there's good and bad. However, having said that, I, even though I make fun of Malayalis, even though I make fun of their um, accent, I can tell you, Malayalis are some of the hardest working individuals. They they may not show off. They do show off in a small way. But majority of them save money to send it back home. And uh, that's something really amazing about them. And uh, though they have poor grooming skills, though they have poor, uh, in terms of their accent is very, you know, you know we make fun of it. But I can tell you that uh, the level of intelligence, the level of business-minded competence, you can, you'll never get anywhere. And, um, you know, I don't know how far this really matters, but I'm extremely proud of being a half Kerala or half Malu. And I think uh, uh, that's, that's the thing that makes them so unique. They are amazing as they are. And I would really tell you, uh, I mean, if you really want to see movies, See some of the olden movies that have stories with English subtitles. Some of the Malayali movies, Malayalam movies, they're so authentic and so real. They're not like this typical Hollywood movies. Now, I don't know. I've seen maybe Bharatam or something that was, I think, 10, 15 years ago or something. Amazing, amazing stuff. Okay, let's move on. Next question. Test account asks, share your thoughts about so-called modern intellectuals like Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, Sam Harris, are they worth guiding about postmodern reality? Okay, see, I I got introduced to people like Richard Dawkins, then from there, Sam Harris, Christopher Hitchens. If you can see his videos online, Christopher Hitchens debate. He was he was one of the greatest uh, debaters of our times. It's so sad that he died due to cancer. Daniel Dennett, Stephen Hawkins. Michael Shermer, Bertrand Russell, Stephen Fry. Now, the common thing about all these people is they are atheists. But I'll tell you the logic that they were able to provide, the thought-provoking, critical thinking that I learned from them, I think shaped the foundation to where I'm today. Uh, obviously, they got old. Many of them have stopped coming. Richard Dawkins is in his 70s, 80s. Stephen Hawkins has died. Christopher Hitchens died. Michael Shermer, Bertrand Russell is dead anyway. Even uh, Carl Sagan, uh, dead, but his videos are there. So today I listen to people like Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, Candace Owens, Charles Kirk, Larry Elder, Stephen Chowder, Dave Rubin, Piers Morgan. Uh, yes, they do belong to one side of the political spectrum, but the logical analysis that they give is pretty thought-provoking. Now, I don't agree with everything that they say. Like, for example, they, they consider USA is perfect, they don't. They say there is absolutely no racism in USA. Um, they have. They believe that abortion is evil. Now I don't agree with all these, but then again, there's a lot of learning that they can offer you, and I would highly recommend that you check them out and you know listen to what they have to say, even if you don't agree with what they have to say, because it really goes to show you. I mean, how smart and intelligent people are. Okay. Uh, and so in question, are they worth guiding about postmodern reality? Yes, it's, uh, I would say, at least for me, I would definitely say it's worth listening to them. I always listen to them. Tony Stark, your views on the law of attraction, it seems a new religion to me like Scientology. See, the, the, the problem with these internet marketers, um, people who want to sell their books and uh, rehashed material, they put these terms like law of. There is no such thing as the word law, if you put it in front of the word attraction, doesn't legitimize it. There is no such thing as 
the law of attraction there's no such thing it's all bullshit in fact the the book the secret by ronda burn is absolute garbage i wouldn't even use it to clean my bum okay it's that stupid almost all the authors and contributors of that book they have put like mysticism and all that they are all people who have lawsuits most of them or some criminal case against them or they have been caught for scamming or total garbage utter nonsense pseudo science this law of attraction is serious garbage and anybody who tells me law of attraction believe in yourself i just keep away from them because i understand that they are lost it's more like following a religion exactly like you said and i was part of this because that time i was 16 years old and i didn't know anything i was like wow there's a law of attraction only to realize later on these people are just trying to make me buy their books because they want me to feel good but it's all empty just like tony robbins he just gives you an experience a great feeling but there are no tangible results that will ever happen next one ashley mendes he comments quite a lot why am people employers companies don't give second chances to people that fuck up their reputation well simply because this world does not have time for people who keep fucking things up if you make a mistake be ready to pay the price for it and if a company does not want to give you a chance well you'll have to go somewhere else why they don't want to give you a chance because that is their free will they can choose if they want to give you or they can choose not to okay next one the paul 9559 what are your thoughts about getting vaccinated to travel from my perspective and what i've read it seems that most of the vaccines aren't exactly safe also it seems slowly it might be enforced to make it mandatory my thoughts are very simple you follow rules of a country as long as you stay in the country you follow protocol and process uh you cannot become smart by just reading google.com or conspiracies and theories these people from un to the doctors most of them have spent years and years and they know more than us so if they are vaccinating the majority of people um and you know there should be some good thing that comes out now i'm not saying that if they start vaccine uh, vaccinating everyone you just run no you wait for one year you check are there any side effects if there are no side effects one year two year then you get it and if in case they make it mandatory you don't have a choice okay what do i think about these vaccine passports it's a rule it's a rule that they have if you want to travel follow the rule if you don't want to travel or you don't want to go on that particular airline or country then you have an option not to but if you want to travel to that country then you have to respect the rules even if you don't like it Pascal de Souza says loy i don't miss any of your videos well, i appreciate thanks a lot pascal i am a mangalorean and you have roots in mangalore yes my mother and stepfather and all my relatives are from mangalore i see very honesty i see very honesty in your videos i wish you all the best and i hope to see at 50000 subscribers soon yes i hope so in fact uh, i think i'll be very happy the day i reach 100000 subscribers because then i can get that plaque which would be a meaningful achievement for me because it has been so slow i mean i literally get only i would say 100 to 200 maybe sometimes 500 subscribers a month it's it's slow i know there are people who are getting 20000 even a week or sometimes even a day but um, you know like pudi pai got i think a million or 2 million in one day or something like that so <laughs> well i'm not in that league anyway thanks a lot pascal i appreciate uh, ruos the sub okay uh, he uh, this gentleman also has been commenting quite a lot i appreciate i want to leave india well if you want to leave india make sure that you have enough and more money i am 20 you are still young my dad recently passed away which i offer my condolence he was alive and i was planning to go to canada now what should i do well uh, life sometimes throws you a curve ball you just go over the flow now what you do is start working start earning start saving do whatever it takes to save money remember save at least 50% of your income keep working forget friends forget everything else yes do enjoy your life in between but be careful of wine women and um, you know not banking wine women and especially drugs and smoking be careful of that i'm not expecting any help from my mum well you're a strong man i guess i want to go to the middle east temporarily for welding electrician or other skills if you do go there and you take up these low paying jobs 
you're going to destroy your life please do not go there because you're not going to get anything you'll be getting a minimum basic wage and you'll be stuck with your visa they'll take your passport and then you'll destroy your life just don't go there uh, especially if you're looking at welder electrician for that skill i would say go to the west they have much better pay scale for these uh, skills welding electrician they pay a lot more and earn some money and experience then i want to migrate to a western country see migrating to a western country is always good especially canada provided you have some skill or australia if you are technical uh, but the bottom line which i tell people is end of the day it's all about money if you have enough and more money you can live comfortably anywhere in the world so focus on making money don't look at going to the west as a escape route and i made a video on this you can just google search loy mesido migrating okay Adarsh, he says, how do you deal with life when negativity takes its toll? I guess um, sometimes when you're overwhelmed with anything, whether negativity or depression or whatever, I would just say the three R's, rest, recuperate and relax. You know, take some time off. And most important is switch off from social media because that can be very toxic in nature. So when life gives you too much of negativity, switch off, meditate, relax, be with the people you love and do something constructive. Tony Stark, reason for having so many tattoos on your face and body? Well, it's very simple. I was seeking validation. I was seeking attention. I wanted to be different. I wanted to show I was special. So I was rebellious and I didn't have any guidance. I didn't have anyone to guide me. So that's why I got it done, I guess. So it made me feel I was special. Okay. Musavir Dawar, is buying a house in Dubai a good idea? See, if you have money that you can stay away from fine if you have excess money why not but provided you read the contract provided you understand the law provided you have a legal team to guide you and provided you have people who have already invested and you know the market otherwise just being a guy with a lot of money and just investing anywhere in the world is stupidity the only drawback i can tell you is uh, when you invest money uh, once a landlord gets it he's not going to give you back and then you don't have any rights because the landlord has the most expensive legal team the best contracts designed that favor him and uh, you cannot uh, trump a landlord or you cannot trump uh, a country especially where they give more importance to the citizens so buying a house in dubai is good provided you have excess money and you have a proper legal understanding and team otherwise don't dig vijay Jagathi. He says, the reality of formal education in today's world, what type of formal education is useful for long term and what are the false expectations from a degree? Okay, three questions. The reality of formal education in today's world, I put up a, a video on it uh, very lately. You can just check it out. The reality of education. You need it. It's more like a ticket. It's more like a ticket if you want to travel in an airplane. You need a ticket. Others, you can't travel. Even if you say, I need it, please, I have to travel. So it's a ticket to apply for jobs so if you don't have education your cv will not be considered even if you have the skill okay so that's the first thing what type of formal education is useful well it depends what industry you're going for and then your question is for the long term there is no such degree that can be used for long term unless of course it's let's say you're a doctor then yes medical degree uh, you're an engineer then you need to have an engineering background but in terms of business or arts, uh, they, they don't prove to be useful in the long run. And most importantly is as knowledge is being updated constantly, you need to keep yourself in the mix or you can't say that I got a degree 20 or 30 years ago. They will say it's outdated, you know. And then what are the false expectations from a degree? I think the biggest false expectation is you got a degree, now you'll be employable. Your problems will solve. Life is going to be easy. No, it doesn't work out that way. So I hope this answers your question. Then I have someone with a Hindi name, Hafid, Hafid Shan. I don't know what is this. Um, I'm pretty bad at these names. Okay. Uh, I still don't remember my Hindi alphabets. Okay. Why don't you collaborate with other YouTubers? I have got plenty of people who wanted me to collaborate with them. I think one of the one of the things that I've noticed is people with low number of uh, followers collaborate with those who have high number of followers so there have been i would say five four or five who have had a million followers but the reason i refused to come on their channel is because one was i kind of suspected that they wanted to uh 
get more popular at my cost. Uh, I mean, like make fun of me or one was even a Muslim channel where he wanted to challenge my this thing. And I don't have time for that. I really don't have. It's not that. And because, you know, the thing is someone who's well-versed in the scriptures of Islam. And if he are where to ask me, how, how do I answer? <laughs> and there are some people who specialize in debating and in order to be good at debate, you need to really hone those skills. You can't just become good at debate. It's a skill. So that was one. The second one was I was invited to, uh, I think I told you this before. It was a, a news channel. It was pretty popular, but I decided not to go there because I just didn't know how they would take or what kind of questions they would ask. Because if I would answer something and they would take things out of context, I can get into trouble, which I'm not interested in. Uh, the only YouTuber that I did agree with was CoffeeZilla. Uh, and most of the other YouTubers, which I get plenty, is people with 100, 200, 500, 1,000, you know, um, th those kind of... They, the reason why they want to collaborate with me is maybe... I understand that they want more views. So I don't collaborate because I don't see anything of value. But if I did find someone where I would feel that I can add value and at the same time it adds value to my brand, I would have said yes. It's not that I'm not open to collaborating with others, but I have not met anyone whom I really felt, wow, this is what I want. So I hope that answers your question. Butterfly, is your house still in order after the huge cleanup? Oh, yeah. Um, yes, it is much more better than before, much more. I do have uh, weekly inspections that I do check and uh, not only... I inform my wife, I also get a cleaner and sometimes I take part in myself. Uh, but there's still stuff to get rid of. I'll tell you when you have a child and when you have a wife and when you're busy with work, it just goes on, man. Life is just kind of crazy. Okay, Butterfly ask another question, which is more important in life? Love of money. It just depends on your priority. If you are seeking love and if you're ded ready to dedicate your life to love, then it's love. If it's money, it should be money. For me, it's without a doubt, money is important because without money, I can't do anything. I can't pay my bills. I can't, I can't survive. Yes, doing what I love, but yes, making money. On your case, what is the scope of information technology and programming jobs in UAE? Can someone with an MSc from Pakistan get a job in UAE? Uh, scope of uh, jobs for information technology and programming, there are plenty. But the challenge is, if there are 100 jobs, there are more than 5,000 or 10,000. Like, for every job, there are at least 10 people who will apply for that one job. So it's not just 10, it's like 100 will apply for that one job. So there is more supply than there is demand. So that is why even though there are jobs for information technology and programming, it's very hard for anyone to get a job. It's not at all easy. And the worst part is there are people who just want an entry into the market and they're prepared to even take 50% less than what the market is ready to pay. And then you are from Pakistan. I, need th I think you need to check in terms of visas. Are they issuing visas to Pakistanis or not? And also one last thing is a lot of people from India and Pakistan, a lot of fake degrees. So you need to be careful of that also. So make sure that it is attested properly. Um, but then again, I would say that uh, don't take my word. Check with your contacts, check with your friends. Okay, next one. Critic Indian. Your videos about personal branding, resume rebrand, etc., which ultimately leads to getting a job and working under some employer. No, it's not just working under someone. It's working independently. It's creating your own business or creating your own brand. So personal branding is not just about getting a job. It's about selling and marketing yourself to make money and being able to earn money consistently. My question is those who start working now, what sh should they do to be financially independent as early as possible? One is to be financially independent, save 50% of your income or 60%, learn to sell and market yourself, change jobs every year so that you get accustomed to new environments, new people. Uh, and I would say take risks when you're young because as you get older, you cannot take as many risks as possible. And if you can market and sell yourself as a freelancer, there's nothing like it. Next one, Adam Joshua. Does a college play an important role 
uh, college degree play an important role in the corporate world or is it more based on skill set? Um, I think I've already answered this before and a video. Uh, a college degree is more like a ticket to go and take a flight. Others, you don't have a ticket, they'll not let you sit in the aircraft. So if you have to apply for a job, you need to have a college education. Um, skill set is it'll help you survive in the job. If you don't have a skill set and you get the job, you lose the job. Okay. What are your thoughts on changing career after doing a bachelor's degree? See, people assume that you'll have a career. You'll never have a career. You'll always have a job because a career is something that you're passionate about, that you love doing. Even if you don't get paid as much, you'll still do it. But majority, 90 I would say 95% or even 90, yeah, 90 to 95%. Most of them are just working, working because they have to earn money. So you'll never have an actual career unless, of course, you're a doctor or someone who's a specialist in his profession. So changing careers uh, as in changing, you know, you are an engineer and now you're moving into business or you're moving into arts. It's always possible. But then again, it would be very challenging because as you grow older, it becomes harder. And then you have new competition that is coming up. So sustainability is a big question. Okay. Ramesh Ram Prasad, you said AI, artificial intelligence and ML, machine learning is the next big thing that is going to happen, revolutionize in various industry across. Yes, because they have to cut down costs. They have to cut down the dependability uh, on other people. They want to you know, make the process more accurate, more faster and focus on the bottom revenue. OK, um, so when you have an AI system, it can work 24-7. You have a human being, you need to keep changing and, you know, they need breaks and all that. OK, so how, how real is the impact going to be considering the hype that is around? Well, the impact is very real. When you were in your 70s, people were worried about computers taking over. They did take over. And uh, pe did people lose their jobs? Yes, plenty of people lost their jobs because they automated, let's say, the car industry, the production lines. So a lot of people did lose their jobs. But then more new jobs were created for people who knew how to operate those machines. So the people with old skills will lose their job. The people with new skills will get opportunities. Then what all sectors will this affect? All the sectors, almost all, except, of course, if you're a salesman or you don't have to operate a machine. But otherwise, everyone has. See, keep in mind, when I was young, I saw my first computer at the age of, I think, 16. I saw my friend having a computer with a computer game at the age of 16. I think at the age of 20, 20 or 21, I had my first actual computer that I could play with. Uh, so my daughter has an iPad at the age of two and she knows how to use it. So just see where I was 20, now my child is two. So, you know, it is a change. It is bound to happen and change is inevitable. Once upon a time, people would be proud about having Word, Excel, PowerPoint knowledge. Today, every Tom, Dick and Harry, every child knows it. Okay. How do common people be prepared for change is to educate yourself, learn new skills and be good at the latest things. Don't resist change. That's what I would say. Roshan Jimmy, as someone who's looking forward for doing forward to doing real estate in Dubai, what are some of the things I need to look out for to avoid being scammed, misled or fall in the wrong hands of the nationals are residing there? The first most important thing, Roshan, is to stop asking random strangers online advice on business. Because if you're really serious, you'll not ask, forget a YouTuber, forget anyone. If you're really serious, you'll sit down with someone who is really specialized, is a real professional or a legal uh, professional or a team, and you'll do your research that way, not checking YouTube and checking Google and all that. Uh, this is not the way to do business. And if this is how you do business, I would say it's better you just work for a job as an employee because this is childish what you're doing, asking just people online. It, it, this is not a game. You know, you're, you're gambling with your life savings and with maybe your whole career. Maybe you can end up in jail and you'll never get out. Then what are you going to do? Tell them, oh, I, I asked this YouTuber. Come on, man. It really shows a lack of maturity, Roshan. Okay. Ravi Kant Misra would love Loy to make a video while he's playing with his kid. Well, since there's a demand for it, I'll share a few videos here and there. But obviously, sometimes, not every time. But thanks. Appreciate Ravi. Ghani A. Are there different changes for residents in Dubai as opposed to tourists? Example, Salik. Um, 
Yes, uh, for tourism, I think the tourists can just come, but it depends on nationality. Let's say, for example, from West, it's visa on arrival. Asians, you need to have a certain amount of bank balance. But if you're talking in terms of that way, yes, the rules in terms of um, nationality. But if you're talking in terms of residing there, taking a job, always remember first preference to locals, Emiratis. Second preference, uh, not preference, in terms of high salary income to Westerners. And then last is obviously uh, the Asian community. So, uh, but do they have different charges? I doubt. If it's a fine, it's a fine. Uh, unless, of course, you are an Emirati, then maybe with influence and contacts, you can get it removed. But overall, I would say uh, fines and all that is the same for everyone. Uh, packages in terms of work is different based on your nationality. Emirati first, Westerners next. There are different categories in Westerners and then Asians. And in terms of tourists, well, it depends on your passport. Westerner gets visa on arrival. Uh, Asians, well, you need to have a you know, bank balance. JHC fan. Is it permissible for expats to wear Emirati national costume kandura to help them fit with the locals? Yes, you can wear a kandura. There's no problem with that. But pretending to be a CID, pretending to be an Emirati to gain something or prank others, that can backfire. So be careful for what is your purpose. If you're just wearing out of like to mix with other people, fine. That's, I don't see a problem there. But yes, be careful if you're thinking of going to a mosque or talk to ladies and all that. Okay, MJA. Dubai is no longer the place to work in like the good old days. Yes, if you compare to the 70s and 80s. It has become a cesspit for everyone to head and work there. And the money is pathetic. It has lost its spark. Where do you think the next hot place would be? The next hot place would be a country that is not developed, that has to develop, where they are making the, where the laws are pretty liberal, where you can invest easily, at least until it develops. So just like Dubai was a desert and whoever came there in the 70s and 80s made their money. Same way, even the island where I'm staying, the people who came here like 20, 30 years ago, whatever they bought today is worth 100 times more. So I don't know which country in specifically, but a country that is totally like a uh, forest or desert which is just developing and they have good leadership and they're inviting people that would be do i know any place like this uh, well if i did i myself would have gone there so i don't know but then again uh, don't discount uh, places where which are already developed because even the competition is high there's still always possibility to make money others everyone would be just leaving developed countries okay CGS, no, CG Souk 3D models. When did you join Illuminati? Okay, I do have a uh, couple of friends from Freemasons and uh, I don't know if it's Illuminati, but it was a group. Uh, yes, I do have a couple of friends who are ex-mafia members and all that, but these are just very few and it's not like I talk to them every day. They just, they send me messages from different phones all the while, so... That, that's it. Mr. J, does lawyer invest in stocks, cryptos, and currencies? Uh, no, I don't invest in anything that I do not know. The Cube, do you speak, understand Thai language? No, I don't. Just the basics, just high over you. I just don't have to drive for it. Bina Kam Kamari, why does school never teach teenagers how to make money? Well, because uh, the teachers themselves don't know how to make money. If they did know how to make money, they wouldn't be teachers in the first place. The second thing is the, curricul the curriculum is not designed to teach you money. Third one is you can never learn money by theory. You need uh, the actual physical process. And earning money is a long drawn out process, a very painful time, you know, time intensive. And a school is not designed for that. A school would never make money if this is what they would focus. And worst part is you can only learn one skill at a time, not multiple uh, subjects. There are schools that teach you, let's say, skills in terms like electrician or being a plumber or learning certain artistic, this thing. But those are very remote and very few. So that's why schools don't teach. Because remember this much is a school is designed for a profit uh, incentive. It's not designed for you know, these purposes, unless, of course, there's a visionary who has created. There are some schools in some countries, but then I guess they're still having challenges where funding is concerned. But then again, I would just say, find out what you want to learn and go join um, that trade or find someone who can teach you or a mentor. You know, that's what I would say. 
JHC fan, do you have any tips for Indian Pakistani expats who want to date Emirati women? The best tip I would give is just don't. Because <laughs> if you're dating Emirati women in UAE, UAE women in UAE, remember the law protects them and they can destroy your life with a click of a finger. In fact, if anybody were to find out that a non Emirati guy is dating an Emirati woman, you're going to get into serious trouble. Trust me. It's, I know this from uh, you know experience of other friends. Okay, Swami Meem Ananda. Okay, what do you feel about vegetarianism, veganism, and guilt-free non-violent food? It's, it's a preference. It's a lifestyle. It's like being gay or lesbian or whatever. It's just a lifestyle choice. If you're happy with it, why not? I don't see it harming anyone. Some people like it, some don't. In my case, I'm pretty happy eating normal food. So, you know, if you can sustain and it keeps you healthy, go ahead. Vinu Babu, what makes the people as global profile practical? What makes the people as global profile practically? Please come some realities which is not available in Google. Okay, I'm trying to understand your question. What what will make your brand into a global profile? And I should give an example that is not available on Google. But I'll give you a very simple answer. Look at what I'm doing. I'm known globally by people in Canada, USA, Africa, India, Pakistan. I mean, uh, I'm not saying I'm uber famous, but I'm known everywhere. Uh, you just have to copy the recipe of what I'm doing. I'm putting out content for other people. I'm giving them value. I provide a service that is available through consulting. So if you can do something like this, you will be a global profile. If you want to be a celebrity, much bigger than that, then you'll obviously have to do something even more than that, that there is a demand for. And for that, you'll have to commercialize it, have a price point, And, you know, obviously, then it becomes complex. You need to have a team, you need to have a strategy, you need to have a legal team, you need to have, you know, quite a number of things, production team. It never ends. So if you want something that's not available on Google, just see what I'm doing. Try to copy that. I think um, by looking at uh, what I do practically every single day, you'd see how consistent I am. If you would copy that, I think you'd be successful. And yes, connect with people because end of the day, if nobody, nobody is willing to listen to you, uh, follow you, talk to you, pay you, trust you, how can you survive? Okay. Next one, the cube. Have you cheated on your wife until now? Uh, okay. If it is chatting with other women sexually and all that, yes, I have chatted. So if that is cheating, yes. If it is a sexual massage, I think I've had once where the lady gave me a nice hand job and, you know, she can kind of give me a blow job. Being with another woman, even though I had plenty of chances, I've refused. There are girls who have come here, very bold, adventurous women, uh, and I've refused. So, uh, you know, so you can form your opinion. So if chatting with other women or getting a sexual massage is cheating on my wife, then yes. But if it is being with other women, uh, spending time with them, talking means physically. Uh, no, I am not at all interested in that. And last, if not the least, Butterfly asks, are you proud or ashamed of being an Indian or both? Uh, I'm, I'm neither proud nor I'm ashamed. I mean, I am what I am. Uh, I, I, I don't see any reason to be proud. Like, let's say, for example, someone who's Indian, they win the World Cup or they become a CEO. I'm not like, yeah, India! I'm just chill pill. And if I find uh, someone who has, you know, done something wrong and it's an Indian, I'm not going to say, oh, shit, you know, today you made me feel bad and all that. So I'm just normal, everyday guy. It's just that, uh, yes, I do tend to have a little bit of connection with Indians because I'm from India. I've had Indian friends. I understand a little bit of the Indian language. Indian culture is part of me. So I hope this answers your question. So anyway, guys, these were the questions that were asked. I answered all of them. I hope this gave you some bit of value. I appreciate the support. I appreciate the trust. Um, and uh, yes, uh, I. it means a lot to me that you guys support my channel, my work. Trust me. And uh, uh, you're always there, part of the community. So I hope, you know, this added value. It's 2.37. I think I've literally spent around 50 minutes, 5-0. So 
this was dedicated to you thank you very much this is me signing off you guys take care